Liberia congratulates His Excellency Philemon Yagwan on the, his election as president of the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly. You can be assured of Liberia's support as you steer the affairs of the General Assembly. I extol His Excellency Dennis Francis for his astute leadership during his presidency of the 78th session of the General Assembly and commend his determination to inspire and rekindle hope globally. I deeply thank Secretary General Anthony Guterres for the remarkable and visionary leadership he continues to provide in pursuit of our collective mandate. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in the summer of 1945, Liberia joined other nations in San Francisco as one of the original signatories to the United Nations Charter. On that federal day, the world, having suffered the scourge of war, was full of hope and determined to reverse the past. Nearly 80 years on, and reflecting on the preamble of the United Nations Charter, which declares our commitment to promote social progress and better standard of life and larger freedom, we ask the question, has our reaffirmation of faith in the dignity and worth of human person made eight decades ago they had been realized. We must admit that the world has changed and the frontiers that we now embrace are different. In it, greed, insensitivity to the poor, the, interna the, the international drug epidemic, money laundering, dynamics of climate change, and the impact of social media must compel us to rethink our approach to global peace and security. Our beloved United Nations must undergo the institutional and philosophical reflections required to respond to the new age. As we assemble under this theme, unity in diversity for advancement of peace, sustainable development, and human dignity for everyone, everywhere, it is important to recognize the shared values and collective efforts that come from our unity with diversity. We must acknowledge these as essential for the advancement of peace, sustainable development, and the inherent dignity of every human being worldwide. By doing so, we can build a better world where no one is left behind. Like many nations gathered at this assembly, Liberia recommits to the Sustainable Development Goals. Since the end of the country's conflict, we have strived to follow a development path that will lead to building a capable state. Twelve years ago, we dared to dream of a future within the realm of possibility, harboring core cool national aspirations transform the future. Name Liberia, Rising, or Vision 2030. It has been the driving force behind all of our planning efforts. The building of blacks and the tenants of Vision 2030 are significantly aligned with the sustainable development goals. Our government's arrest agenda is a comprehensive approach developed to address the economic and social needs of millions of Liberians, especially the youth, who account for 60% of our population. With emphasis on agriculture, roads, infrastructure, development, justice, and the rule of law, education, sanitation, and health, and tourism, the agenda had mainstreamed the SDGs as it is designed to take Liberia to the finish line of the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. The fight against poverty, the promotion of human dig dignity, a steadfast commitment 
Despite our progress, poverty remains a significant challenge with over half of our population living below the poverty line. The Sustainable Development Goals aim to eradicate poverty in all forms of 20, by 2030, ensure social protection for the poor and vulnerable, improve the access to essential services. Liberia is dedicated to assessing the levels and the causes of poverty and implementing strategies to reduce it and promote shared prosperity. My government also acknowledges present need to address maternal and newborn mortality by implementing robust monitoring and evaluation of health services in the country to accelerate the reduction of maternal and newborn mortality. We are particularly blessed and pleased with the United Nations AC joint mission to Liberia this year, which conducted a commitment, concluded a commitment to combat the high burden of increasing newborn deaths. We welcome the United Nations General Assembly's decision to declare July 25th as the International Day of Women and Girls of African descent this year. This significant milestone acknowledges that women and girls of African descent have unique opportunities, and but they also have challenges that the global fight against slavery and racism is necessary to achieve gender equality. Liberia credits its credentials by producing the first woman president of the United Nations General Assembly, Angie Brooks Randall, and first female president of Africa, President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. <laughs> Liberia has witnessed and continues to witness the immense contribution of women and girls of African descent in politics, culture, and every area of societal development. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Liberia has enjoyed uninterrupted peace for almost two decades, following the 14 years of civil conflict. During this time, we have held four democratic elections, with last year's election marking the fourth since the return to democratic order in 2006. In January this year, Liberia achieved the historic milestone by peacefully transitioning from one democratic government to the other. This progress is significant because before the 2018 transition, the last democratic transition occurred in 1944, about 74 years earlier. We are gradually fostering and solidifying our democratic culture ensuring that democracy is here to stay in Liberia. Now it is time for our people to reap the democratic dividends. The rule of law is fundamental for peace, justice, strong institution, and dignity for human person. Liberia is taking significant stride towards openness, transparency, and accountability by empowering and supporting transparency institutions. Our government is committed to implementing audit recommendations by the General Audit Commission to restore public and donors' confidence in the governance system and improve regional and international cooperation. In addition, the country has taken a major step in confronting its conflict past to ensure accountability and justice for crimes and other human rights violations committed during the war and promote healing and national reconciliation. A significant development in our transitional justice process was the signing on May 2, 2024, of the Executive Order 131 to create the Office of Establishment of War and Economic Crime Court for Liberia, a key recommendation from the truth and reconciliation process in Liberia. 
Our actions align with the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, joint follow-up on impunity and past human rights violation. As we embark on the process and acknowledge the enormity of the task, my government seeks the support of the United Nations, partners, stakeholders in the pursuit of justice for victims, peace, and reconciliation. Liberia is facing a drug crisis that is affecting our youth and jeopardizing the country's future. This epidemic, driven by international criminal enterprises and their networks, poses a severe threat. In response, we have not only declared the drug epidemic a health emergency and a national security threat, but we have also been taking steps to address this issue by establishing a dedicated national body to tackle drug abuse in Liberia. I urge international community to join Liberia in addressing this escalating drug crisis. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the world is facing numerous crises, including global threats such as disease, security, and climate change as well as food and resource shortages. Our vulnerabilities are evident, and we need to use a collective knowledge to find solutions that will preserve the planet for future generations. Climate change is undeniably real, and its threat to our environment and the way of life is becoming increasingly apparent. We must take urgent action to address this threat, including cooperative effort to implement Article 6.2 of the Paris Agreement. Liberia, as the most forest, forested country in West Africa, with over half of the land covered by forests, plays a vital role in biodiversity and environmental sustainability. As a result, our country is taking important steps to lead conversation on climate action. My government has called on our legislature and stakeholders to begin looking at the Paris Agreement, particularly under Article 6, to help advance actions towards establishing Liberia's nationally determined contribution to combat climate change. While we take these actions, we are mindful of the need to build capacity and invest in critical areas of our economy, such as using alternative financing for investment in the blue and green economy and technological transfer to support these climate actions. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the goal we set for ourselves and the future are better served on the foundation of peace and security. Having enjoyed peace for over two decades while in a long-running conflict, we aim to promote peace and stability at home, in the region, and globally. The threat of conflict to our shared world underscores the importance of collaborative efforts to foster regional and global stability and peace. Therefore, we support all the UN's effort to address peace and security issues worldwide. Liberia is concerned about escalating security challenges in the West, Re West African region, including terrorism and economic and political instability. These pose significant threat to regional peace. So we urge full dialogue and cooperation among West African nations to address these issues effectively. Meanwhile, Liberia firmly stands with the rest of West Africa in the resolve to maintain our 50-year-old Regional Economic Commission ECOWAS intact. We oppose efforts to disintegrate our union and will not accept the region being used for proxy conflicts.
We look at the ALU and the UN to support us in keeping the regional body united. Similarly, at the global level, we call for an immediate ceasefire in the Middle East to provide civilians an essential humanitarian relief. We urge both Israel and the Palestinians to engage in negotiation towards lasting peace, including a two-state solution. Additionally, we see the ongoing conflict in the Ukraine as a threat to global peace and security. Therefore, there is an urgent need for a peaceful resolution that also respects Ukraine's territorial integrity. Mr. President, Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this year's assembly is a pivotal moment for Liberia's bid to ascend to the African non permanent seat of the United Nations Security Council 2026. We are proudly, we have proudly announced our candidacy. We look forward to the support of the member state to vote Liberia overwhelmingly to the non seat of the Security Council. We can work with council members to promote peace, justice, and security. Liberia is dedicated to promoting sustainable growth and ensuring human dignity for all. Liberia is prepared to work together with the United Nations and global allies and international community to accomplish the sustainable development goals, establish a fair, peaceful, and sustainable world. The commitment to unity is deeply ingrained in Liberia's history as a founding member of the United Nations and a post-war international institution, as well as region and sub-regional organizations. It also affirms our strong belief in multilateralism and international rules and based world built on shared values and principles of crucial to the future. The future of a more peaceful, prosperous, sustainable world must be all-encompassing, fair, and dignified to everyone worldwide. One United Nation, one world. Thank you, and thank you very much.